The Bible says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Is that the way the world thinks today? I'm not explaining this passage. We're reading it. You come up with your own understanding. I, do, do you see how if you just read the Bible, there's no explanation really needed? Do you know who needs to provide the, the extra explanation on this are the people who want to undo what this is just saying when you read it. That's where the extra explanations have to come in and say, well, when it says this, it really means something different. Watch out for people who teach the Bible that way. When you could read something very plain in English and then someone tells you what, well, what that really means. No. It really means what it really says. <laughs> That's it. Let's keep reading. Verse number 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Some people, if they hear this, are going to be fuming. And I don't have to say anything. I'm reading God's word. But you know what? God's word offends people. This isn't Pastor Burson's opinion. We're reading Bible this morning. It already offends. And this is, you're going to tell me that this isn't under attack? In the culture that we have today in the United States of America? This is under attack. This concept, this view of the family, of a wife's role and a husband's role in the family, is under attack. In fact, people think that I'm nuts because I try to live this way, because my wife tries to live this way, because this is the authority that we take in our home, in our family. But you know what? This is the right way. This is the true way. And if you want to have a happy marriage, you should follow this advice. You will be blessed by God by falling into the role that he created for you, man or woman. Verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Wow, there's some real bad advice, huh? How about in Titus chapter 2? You can flip over to Titus chapter 2. I'm going to read from 1 Timothy chapter 5 while you're turning to Titus 2. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 14 says, I will therefore that the younger women marry... Bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, for some are already turned aside after Satan. I will. Will means want. I wonder what God's will is for my life. Well, if you're a younger woman, 1 Timothy 5.14, I think, I think it's a pretty good place to start. I will, therefore, that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Let's look at Titus chapter 2, verse number 3. And again, this whole passage, chapter 2, you can read all of this. It talks to aged men, the aged women, the younger men, the younger women, and it gives instruction for everybody. But let's look at the aged women, verse number 3. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. And then it tells us what things that they should be teaching. Look at verse number four. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Okay, is that a bad thing, being sober? No, I think that's a pretty good thing. To love their husbands. Oh yeah, that's a terrible thing right there. Love your husbands. But I'll tell you what, in the, in the feminist culture that we have today, yeah. that tells you, oh no, well, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And I, my husband is going to tell me anything. You know, that's why he says you need to teach the younger women to love their husbands. And not just to love their husbands, to love their children. Look at verse number five, to be discreet, knowing what things you ought to say and what things you ought not to say, be, having discretion, right? You don't just open up your mouth and just talk about everything publicly or whatever. You are discreet. You're discreet with your actions. You're discreet with your words. Chaste, okay, pure, chaste keepers at home, what does it mean to be a keeper at home? 
Well, if you're at home, where, where are you? You're at home. <laughs> There's a location. And if you're a keeper, you are keeping the home, right? So what does it mean to keep the home? I know, again, this, uh, this is real complicated. I know this is so hard to understand the Bible, isn't it? To be a keeper at home means you're a homekeeper. You're a homemaker is another way that we understand that word. You are running everything that needs to be done in the home. Oh, there's some cleaning that needs to be done over here. Oh, there's some cooking. There's some kids that need to be fed. This is what a keeper at home does. And the Bible teaches that the older women ought to teach this to the younger women, that this is what you need to do. Keep her at home, good. Oh, wait a minute, watch out. Maybe we should just skip this next section because you know the common culture doesn't want to hear that. So we'll censor the word of God and actually not say that out loud because someone might get upset. Oh, wait, no, I forgot where we are. We actually love the Bible. We love God's word and we love all of it. Obedient to their own husbands. Is that hard to understand? The word obedient means obedient. It means that they are submissive. It means that the husband is in charge and that the wife is to be obedient. Yes, I'm expounding this passage. This isn't Ephesians chapter 5, okay? I said I wasn't going to expound that passage and I didn't. It says be obedient to your own husbands. Obedient, that's where the word obey comes from. I didn't write this book. I believe God did. And because I believe God did, I'm going to treat it as such. I'm not going to allow my own thoughts or, oh man, I don't like the way that that sounds. Hey, if that's the way that I felt about this, then I would have to change. Because I would be wrong. Because this is the way that God thinks about this. 